Hello, this is Modu 3, Lesson 3. I'm excited for you in the sense that you have stuck to this and we haven't even started. So I need you to keep this momentum going. Okay, process of editing fiction on the developmental editing level. Are you ready? So let's go. In this particular lesson, we are going to look at the actual work that you need to do as a fiction editor, the in-depth part of what a developmental editor does on a fiction work. What you will learn, you will learn how to analyze a story structure, things to consider in a good fiction story, how to create and maintain character actions, how to build a story's world or setting, and how to ensure that the story is believable. Okay, as a developmental fiction editor, at the core of everything you do with a story from beginning to the end are three major things. First is you need to have an initial evaluation of the manuscript. You need to read the manuscript like a reader, like an like intended reader. And while you're reading, you should particularly identify major issues that the work has or the story has. And of course, identify areas that need improvement. That's the first thing you do. You don't get on your laptop and put all your track changes and start working. No, you sit back on your back or lie on your back and read this book like a novel, like Hello, this work is done already, so I'm, I'm trying to enjoy it. That's the only mood you'll be in to get to evaluate this for real the first time. Okay, then secondly, you need to give feedback to your author and also make suggestions. Now, these feedbacks you provide has to be detailed and should be about the structural changes you intend to make, the plot development changes you need to make, the character acts you need to add, add the thematic elements that need to come together. The author needs this feedback and the suggestion so that they can have a grasp of the work ahead and how they come in. Then, when this is done, you get to the real work, which is the next stage. And that is you begin to revise and edit. Now, working with your author is very important at this stage because all through the multiple rounds of revisions and editing you have to do refining the script strengthening the manuscript the author has to be carried along now this part the third part will become the core of the entire work that you're doing yeah now let's get down to business like we highlighted in lesson two the first aspect of your investigations into any fiction manuscript is to look at number one the plot what is the plot? The plot is the main sequence of events that make up a fiction story. Okay? It usually tells and follows the protagonist's goals, their obstacles and conflict that they are facing, and then it follows the resolution of that conflict that he or she is facing. Who is the protagonist? The main character around who the story revolves. Now, there are five elements that you have to look at when you're evaluating a plot. Follow me step by step and please take notes. Remember, this is the first aspect you're going to look at. You're going to edit. Though you cannot edit the whole part of the manuscript looking for everything, looking for spelling, looking for plot, looking for structure. That's where a lot of editors get it mixed up. Just a side note, if you're working on this manuscript alone, you need time lapse also in between looking at this manuscript in different ways to be able to catch the errors that you need to correct. This is so important. Now, the plot, like I have said, is the main sequence of events that talks about what the protagonist is going through, his goals, his aspiration, or have obstacles, have of the conflict she's facing. And of course, how that becomes resolved at the end and to end happily or not. The five elements you will use to measure that you are done with editing the plot of this story is number one what is the exposition like at the beginning of that story exposition means when you're introducing the characters and describing the settings and the initial conflict they are in how is that going how has the author been able to expose the beginning of that work who the characters are where they are where the story is set what they are facing at the moment so it's when you read you know with an eye of setting a plot 
to revise the plot after you're done with your initial evaluation of course you're now working on the plot this is where you have to ensure that this exposition is done satisfactorily you might find out that it was not done and that's where your work starts there has to be a place or a semblance of the year or the time where a story is set a story cannot be hanging a story cannot just start and then there is this little girl and she is going to the market and then which part of the world is she or oh, is she black is she fair nobody knows it's not going to happen right so there has to be a place a time a year or a period a semblance of a, the period where this character is situated then also you have to know in this exposition who and who is this story revolving around not that the author is introducing characters and you're wondering so who exactly it's not a good story if it's like that so who and who is this story revolving around and what are they facing in their lives immediately the story opens what is the initial conflict is it a young school girl who just lost her parents and moved to, to another city to stay with the relative there has to be a situation just like real life there's always a situation now, the second element should be, what is the rising action? This means that how is the conflict developing? And what are the events that are happening as the story progresses that shows the conflict's development? Yeah, this event has to continue until there is a climax. So it has to be a series of events all the way. Remember, we are talking about the plot and we are in the second element after its position of the rising action so this story has already exposed the characters shown where the story is set what their present situation but it, it can't end there it has to progress what is further happening to the characters what is further happening to where they are what are the series of, series of events that are happening now that continues those events continue until there's a climax which is the third element of the plot the climax is that turning point where that major character or the protagonist faces a main conflict. So there is an initial conflict where they already are in their lives before the story starts. Then there has to be a hit. There has to be a major conflict where everybody is now like, oh, what's going to happen at this point? And it has to be different from the initial conflict. Even though the initial conflict is going to lead to this main event. Do you understand? So you have to find this in the story. If not, you have to, it is your job to work with the author to insert it. This has to get the reader tensed and glued. Like, let me see what's going to happen next. Then, the next should be the actions that follow this climax. And those actions are called falling actions. Pay attention to how exposition leads to rising actions. Rising actions gets to a climax, which is the third point. The climax comes to falling actions. Now, it is the following actions, which are a series of other events that happen after the main conflict hit gets to the climax that leads to a resolution. It's a falling action because there has to be a resolution. It's the fifth aspect of looking at a plot. Now, what is the resolution? It is the conclusion where conflicts are resolved and the story comes to an end. So, these are these five ways to look at the plot of that story you have to make sure that there are significant aspects of that work that shows you the exposition rising action climax the falling action and resolution every story that you edit has to have these elements to have a story plot and that is essential at the core then no story should focus on just the plot of the main characters only yeah just like in real life you as the main character of your life could be going through a phase like you're at the point where you have arrived you're about to buy your first car and in that same period of your life your sister or brother or friend who visits you often or stays with you could be taking a professional exam and finding out his scores are being manipulated and you have to go in defense of him to, to you know while at it or you may even discover that the lecturer who is victimizing them or him or her is someone you know. Just a way of explaining that life, just like in a story, it can't be made up of just one plot. That's what I'm trying to say. So that leads us to what we call the subplot. Every beautiful story has to have a subplot. In fact, some genres of fiction has multiple subplots. And that's what brings the complexity and excitement for reading a work. So let's talk about what a subplot is because this story you're working on has to have it. 
A subplot is a secondary storyline that runs parallel to the main plot. I'm sure when you think about books you've read, you've read or movies in particular, you're going to see this happen a lot. Yeah, so there's a main character. In movies, they call them the supporting character, so the, the supporting actress. So their story also involves a bit and it shows how it affects the main character. Now, a subplot often involves supporting characters, like I've said, and adds a lot of depth to the narrative of the story. In the story above, like I gave, the subplot could be that the lecturer was someone the main character dated in the past, for instance, and maybe when they were dating, she was still, or he was still in his broke age, and that person wasn't really encouraging her, in case it's a lady now, wasn't encouraging her to make money and be independent and buy her dream car in that sense, just because she was a woman. This is just an example. So driving a brand new car to go check out who is victimizing her sister or brother only to arrive there to meet this lecturer who used to be in her past and she is now in a new reality she has always wanted and the person that you want so you can already see how that can spice up that story yeah so even though it's not the major story but it adds a lot of depth to knowing this character the major character more and all of that right a subplot should be able to bring more action and it has to be properly linked to the main character in the story what is the purpose of a subplot? I've added it already. First, it has to add some complexity and richness to the story. Also, it has to help to develop secondary characters and also reinforce the themes of that story and the motifs, the major lessons and symbolism that the author wants to drive. Now, after checking out the plot and the subplot, the next aspect that you need to look at as a developmental editor is to investigate how fast or slow the actions in this story are going very important and this is called pacing now pacing is the speed at which a story is progressing pacing affects the reader's engagement and of, of course the emotional response they also have to the story so while you're evaluating the pacing of a fiction work there are four things you need to consider and in fact you have to also ensure them if they are not in the work by the time you're facing this aspect number one balance there had to be a mix of some fast-paced you know um, scenes and some slower scenes so that you can maintain the reader's interest if a story is fast-paced you know after one scene two three four scenes there's two years later or two years after and then after two years later the moves on five years ah uh -uh. <laughs> this the even the reader will be like mm, they are messing with my head <laughs> you know that kind of thing so you have to check out if this story has this mix of fast-paced scenes and slower scenes now i'll tell you how that comes to play in the work and adds uh, some originality and depth to it now the second aspect that you're going to look at when you're checking for, for pacing after balance you check for tension and the release has this story built tension by using some fast-paced scenes that's what you do when you introduce fast-paced scenes you want to build some tension and then you provide relief with slower reflective moments in other scenes so that's how to balance it can you see let me also go ahead next is the length of the scenes is what will help you create this which is the third element when you're evaluating fiction, the four things that you're going to look at, like I said, is the balance of the fast-paced and slower scenes. The second aspect is the tension, how you're creating tension with the fast-paced scenes and releasing the tension with the slower-paced scenes. Next, after this, is the length of the scenes. All the scenes cannot be the same length. It's not like an online course where you have to have models and then lessons. No. So... Number three is the scene length. You have to employ the use of various scene lengths to control pacing. It's in the scenes that the elements of pacing will come alive. Now you can see how they come together. Finally, in ensuring that there is an interesting pacing to the work, you have to ensure that there are, number one, cliffhangers, which is the fourth element. There has to be cliffhangers. Cliffhangers are used to maintain suspense. And keep the reader engaged and wanting more. You know, that point you get to the story, you're like, oh my god, where did it end here? What's we need a part two? We need a part two. That's it. It catches the reader and keeps them wanting more. Cliffhangers are the fourth element you use when you're evaluating for pacing. Now we have looked at 
plot and subplot, we are looked at pacing. At this point, here is how you can identify and resolve structural issues. So you are assuming you've identified these things in the story and all that. Look out for these common structural issues. You're going to look out for plot holes. <laughs> you know how we have plot holes on the road? When there are holes in the plot of the story as well, we call it plot holes. So these are, find out the inconsistencies and gaps that are in the storyline that does not make sense to the logical mind. Those are plot holes. You know, um, find out the things that make the story not coherent. Things that are not coherent in the story. Okay? Now, another thing you have to look out for, you know, remember that we're looking at common structural issues to look at. Plot holes is one. Then look out for weak climaxes. You know, some people will say, oh, this is the climax. At this point, you ask the author, you say, this is the point of the climax. But you're reading it and you're like, mm, this is so underwhelming. It doesn't have to be underwhelming. It has to be overwhelming. So check if the climax is underwhelming and if it fails to deliver a satisfying resolution. So next, check for unresolved subplots. Sometimes people say, okay, there has to be a main character and this is happening. Let me introduce another character, a supporting character that something is happening to them. Somehow they, f they f forget to continue the subplot story to the end. <laughs> that is a weak, unresolved subplot. Okay, now, uh, so when it's not when the subplot is not concluded, be looking out for unresolved subplot. You have to make sure that you identify it um, on time. The next thing that is structurally that could be structurally wrong is poor pacing. Sections of the story that drag, oh, you need to work on it. Or sections of the story that are rushing through important events. These events are very key to the development of the character, but the author makes it very fast. No, you have to work on it. So these are the aspects you need to fix to ensure a strong, interesting story structure. Next, let me give you the strategies you can use for a great story. Yeah? Um, no, sorry, for a great story resolution. So number one, because how the story ends is very important. Even though from beginning to the end is important. So let's look at how to create a story resolution that really bangs. First, Read and do a re-evaluation. Re so, reassess the story's outline and the structure. You have to do this, right? So that nothing is left hanging. These are the strategies. Now, look out for consistency and ensure that there's a logical consistency and there's continuity throughout the plot. Do you know, I have edited books where even the main character's uh, name the author forgot it at some point and started calling them something else in the middle of the work. In fact, I have even seen written published works sold to school children in primary school, a storybook, and the names were mixed up. <laughs> so you don't want this to happen for your author. Of course, that's why they came to you, right? So, that, of course, that's why they, they came to you, right? So make sure that things are consistent and there's continuity throughout the plot. Another strategy you have to look out for is Rewriting, you have to revise scenes and chapters so that you can fix these structural flaws. You're not just to give your um, author feedback and expect them to go do all the work. There's already this relief that they had when they have shipped their work to you, the editor, right? So you have to carry them along, but you are the one to do the work so that you can also be in control of what you are fixing. Another thing to do is, of course, feedback. When you have fixed these things, you have to take the story as it has now become and give some people who we call better, better readers or peer editors, your fellow editors in your organization, send them the story so they can read and they, they give you feedback on what they're able to identify themselves so they can address the issues going forward. The third aspect of your editing as a fiction editor is to focus on number three, character development. We have moved from plots and subplot to pacing. Now we are looking at characterization. I mean, without the character, there's no story, right? So even if, because even, even in a story that is being narrated, the narrator is a character. So the character is the soul of a story. So now we're going to bother ourselves with is how do we create believable characters? So we're doing practical things that we can use as editors. Now there are four main attributes that a believable character should have before you say, okay, this character is completely okay. We are going to look at those four attributes that we can use to create 
or attribute of a believable character. Number one, a character has to be complex, just like a human being. Yeah, there are different aspects to you. You're a mother, maybe you're a sister as well. You're somebody's daughter as well. You're somebody's boss or employee in an office. You are a, you are a member of a women group in your church. So your different things at different times. That's how complex human beings are. Or let me say multidimensional. So your characters has to also bring this to life. Your character must be multidimensional. So your character must have strengths. They must have weaknesses. And they must sometimes contradict themselves. And that's okay because, you know, human flaws is a thing, right? That's number one. Number two attribute that your character should have is must be motivated. There has to be a clear and consistent motivation that drives this character into actions, into taking decisions. It has to be there. The third attribute that your character should have is must come from somewhere. They must have a background. They cannot just be people who are familyless, no parents, no siblings, nothing. <laughs> Some people create this kind of character and it's not even funny. You create a character that doesn't that is not coming from anywhere. So your character must be coming from somewhere. They have to be detailed. Back, there has to be a detailed backstory about these characters. So that they, it can inform the um, uh, why they act the way they do. It can tell us why they behave and make the choices they make. Because we are all product of our backgrounds, our value systems and everything is shaped by our environment, our upbringing, the things we've been through. So finally, in creating believable characters, you have to ensure that there's an evolution. It cannot be a static character. Characters must make progress. They must grow. Just like in real life, they must grow. They might be believing in something in one point. At the point, you know, a year later, they don't believe in that anymore. And that's okay because that's how human beings are. They must grow and they must change in their response to the story's event so that the, the reader can also identify with this character. These are the four things to ensure that your characters have as attributes. Now, let me go to show you four techniques. I hope you're taking notes. Four techniques you need to create well-rounded characters. And number one is first, how do you start out to say, let me create this character afresh? Because I can see that the author hasn't quite done a good job. How do you now go to give this character a life, a believable behavior? Number one thing you need to do is to create a character profile. And it has to be detailed. What does it mean? You have to outline who this character is, what their name is, what are their major character traits in the story, what is their history and background, what are the goals that they've set up for themselves? You know, just like you have a movie script, okay? You have to even have more detail than in the movies. What do they like? Who are their friends? You know, but you have to make sure that it's in line with the story, but detailed. What are their pet peeves? What do they like to eat? What setting are they in? How do they like or not like the setting where they are in? You get? So you have to create a character profile. Give the character an age. Yes. A place. A gender all of that next thing you have to do in the four techniques is asking questions yes go and interview real people conduct character interviews so that you understand the perspective that you need to put these characters in and give them real people's voices because people who act like them in real life you have to make sure that they sound like those people in real life next the third technique you need to employ is that these characters need to have relationships. Develop relationships between these characters that will reveal the different aspects or facets of their personalities. Let them have friends. Let's see how they act when they are with their friends, when they're letting their hair down, right? Let's see how they are when they're with their parents, for instance. If I gave an example here and I said, who is the main character related to, right? What is their bond with those people? All of that. Then the fourth technique is you have to introduce conflict. Conflict is a major, major technique in creating well-rounded characters, and which is the fourth technique here. Introduce internal conflict that these characters are having. Also, let there be external conflict that they are also having, so that we'll see how these things challenge the characters and how it prompts or triggers their personal growth. Right? Conflicts should make them take defining decisions 
and change their mind about certain things or move away from a place. So conflicts are very important in explaining and giving us the well-rounded characters that are believable. In developing characters also, the characters must maintain consistency in character. They have to have consistent character actions and their growth also has to be consistent. Now, how do you maintain consistency? How do you ensure that there is consistency in the character in the work that you have been given? You must ensure that characters behave in a particular way. Each of the characters, I mean, should behave in a particular way. That's what makes for a personality. Characters should act in ways that are consistent with their established traits and their motivations you've already created before time. They have to act in accordance with that because you've already established that in the narrative. The next thing you need to do is to use dialogue. These are ways to maintain consistency in their character growth and action. Let them act in a particular way. They use dialogues. Maintain consistency in their speech patterns, the way they talk, the dialects that they infuse to their grammar. The language that they use all through the story, it has to be consistent. Next thing you have to ensure, if you want to ensure consistency in the character growth, is to look at the character acts. A-R-C-S. What are acts? Acts ensure that characters follow logical and satisfying actions that reflect their developments. So it is like the curves in their behavior. It has to still be consistent in their character and we see how they are developing from there now let's look at how to maintain consistency in character growth we are looking at how to maintain consistency in character action so we have said let your characters behave the same way use dialogues to show their speech patterns dialects and language then let their character acts be consistent and logical and satisfying to show their growth to show rather their development now, there are three elements you need when you want to show how that the character is growing in a story. One is throw challenges at them. Place characters in situations that challenge their beliefs and their mindsets and their abilities. Number two, for them to grow, you must use reactions. Show how they react when there are certain events or incidents and how they also learn from the experiences that they are going through. Challenges, reactions. Now, these are things that show their growth. Then number three, introduce changes. Yes, let them experience a change so that you see how they have grown, the things they now accept. In trying to introduce change to them, show how gradual or significant that they are making, that they are moving in the changing their minds and their outlook and their behaviors. So let this change show how they are gradually coming to terms with things or how they are significantly changed from the character that they were before. But of course, consistent with the traits that they have. Show how their behaviors have changed when there are changes, how they adapt to it. Okay? Now, the fourth editing process you should undertake as a developmental editor in a fiction story. We have looked at plots and subplot we have looked at pacing we have looked at characters now let's move on to this fourth which is setting and world building and how to enhance the story's setting why is building the world where characters live important why is setting important as the story unfolds it's important to see where these characters thrive and live the first thing you're supposed to look out for in setting and world building is the context, which means the story has to provide the backdrop against which the story is unfolding. Where? Which period? Which year? What is happening at that time? What is the context? It's very important to know the context for two reasons. It will help you understand the mood and the atmosphere that the story should have and the mood you know contributes to the overall mood and tone of the narrative it helps you know the kind of things to say the kind of dialogue the kind of speech the kind of interactions they should be having based on what's happening in their context 
It's also very important to have context because of influencing the plot. It influences the plot, how the play, how the setting is, how the mood is, how the tone is. Yeah? So how the characters are going to be acting and the decision they're going to be taking will help the story. So the mood and atmosphere and the context of a story helps with the setting and the world building. The mood and atmosphere contribute to the overall mood and tone of the narrative. It's also very important because it influences the plot. It affects the plot, the storyline, and what's going to be happening, the series, the series of events, and how the characters are going to be acting and the decisions they'll be making. So you see why it's very important. Now, let's look at three techniques that you will need to enhance the setting of a story. This is very important as well. Everything I've been saying is very important. Don't get it mixed up, okay? Have very detailed descriptions of the setting. Use very vivid, physical, sensory descriptions. Let's know what the, if there are flowers, the colors, the smell in this setting. Bring the story to life. Are there animals? What kind of houses? Be descriptive in details about the setting. Is it modern houses? Is there air condition in the building? Are there cities in the sitting room? Um, what kind of families? You know, you have to be descriptive. Your setting has to be detailed. Next technique to use to enhance the setting is how, how you integrate the setting into the story it has to be seamless it has to flow it has to not struggle <laughs> yeah so you have to seamlessly integrate the setting into the narrative through your character's interactions but what they are saying by what they are experiencing so let them mention it let them let's see them live in that world yeah, and the third technique for enhancing setting is to use symbolisms. Sometimes you live in a city, you don't have to always mention, oh, Lagos traffic. You could show a symbol of something on the road. You will know that this is still Lagos, for instance. You can show the palm that shows Dakada, that's a quiet bomb, without saying, oh, we're at a quiet bomb now. You know what I mean? And this for people who are Nigerian, so you can relate. Use elements of the setting symbolically to reinforce the story themes and the motifs. So these are the three techniques you can use to enhance the setting of a story. That means these are things you should be looking out for in that story. And when it's not there, it's your job to fix as a developmental editor. Yeah? <laughs> Remember that we talked about consistency and believability of characters. Now, how do we ensure that this story you're looking at is consistent and believable in the setting it makes the setting and world building believable in this fiction story to ensure setting and world building consistently there are also three tools you should use number one continuity ah uh, make sure that there is continuity not like the character um was described wearing a certain thing in the scene before next scene Without having to show us if it was the next day or a next a, a next outing or event, they are they are not they are no longer wearing earrings in this one. They are no longer they don't have fathers anymore in this one. Meanwhile, she was with her father, and you don't mention the father anymore. You know that kind of thing. Maintain continuity in the descriptions and details about the place, the setting, the their home, the favorite market they always go to. Maintain that continuity throughout the story except you show that they have moved also be consistent to where they are moving to number two two you need to use to ensure consistency and believability in your setting is to make the story have rules and laws the, anywhere people live have a set of rules and laws from government and all of that so you have to establish it in the setting of the story Establish it and ensure that the characters are adhering to the rules that govern the setting. Especially in fantasy 
and sci-fi subgenres. A lot of people just write and feel like they can just do anything. The characters can do anything at any time. Meanwhile, you have established a setting that you have not developed and you haven't given rules. Human beings all live or people you live in places where there are rules and laws. So let us see that come alive in the setting. I told you there are three tools you're going to use to create consistency and believability of the setting. The third one is geography and culture. You have to ensure that there's consistent depiction of the geographical features. I've given a hint of that before. Geographical features of the place that they are in, the setting. There has had to be some cultural elements also within the story that can reinforce the setting where it is situated, where they are acting from. To make your setting and world building believable, there are other tools you need to employ to ensure these other ones we have mentioned. You have to research. Yes, conduct thorough research so that you can accurately depict the real world settings. Because the, the world you don't know, and you go and set your story there, you won't be able to bring up the geography and culture, the rules and laws like we have said. So you need to research. So you can create reasonable fictional words. It's fictional doesn't mean it has to be nonsensical. So use the tool of research. Number two, you have to be realistic. Use the tool of realism. So you're being imaginative, yes. But you have to balance your imaginative elements with realistic details. So that you can enhance credibility. People need to begin to believe it. Even when it is cipher, people need to feel like, oh my God, this is really what's going to happen. It has to feel close to home. The next tool you have to use to create believability is depth. Develop a multi-layered setting that has history, culture, people, social norms, all of that. So, And this will also come true from your research. So give it that multi-layered setting that has all of this. Are you following true? Yeah. You have to make your settings real and believable and ensure that you're enhancing your character development too because it's so important it's very 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 important now it's action time <laughs> action time go ahead and mention three tools you need to ensure believability of your characters and also three things you need to do to ensure believability of your settings go ahead and write them down and drop in the group okay what we have learned so far we have learned how to effectively edit a fiction story step by step at the developmental or substantive stage yeah next we are going to look at lesson four where we'll be looking at the process of copy editing a fiction story let's go